Hi again. I'm Brett, and we're talking about safe cattle processing in this video series, sponsored by Elenco. In this segment, we're going to discuss how to use injectable products safely, and here to help me out are two veterinarians, Dr. Tom Portillo of Progressive Veterinary Services and Dr. Brad Williams, a Lanco Beef Technical Consultant. I want to pick up where we left off the last time, talking about good stockmanship, because we haven't yet covered the very important step of proper animal restraint. If you're following the recommendations we made in the video on animal handling and movement, your cattle should be moving calmly and easily through the chute, with no need for yelling or cattle prods. To do the actual processing, let's move on to properly restraining the animals. So when we talk about proper restraint, it varies from situation to situation. So obviously you need to consult your veterinarian uh, to determine what the most appropriate facilities would be. Um, in a feed yard setting, obviously the most proper restraint would be in a squeeze chute um, with the maximum area of neck exposed uh, so that we can administer products in that area per BQA guidelines. Again, uh, I would consult with your veterinarian to determine what's the most appropriate facility uh, for, the, for, for different operations. If you're practicing the good stockmanship techniques we talked about, the cattle should step into the squeeze chute pretty easily. And that's the goal. You don't want them to come charging in at full speed so they hurt themselves or you. And if you went ahead and covered the sides of the squeeze chute, they should not be balking much either. They'll want to head towards the light in front of them. A minute ago, Dr. Portillo mentioned talking to your veterinarian. So let's come back to that. Since our subject is injectable product safety, this is a good time to say that these products should only be used under the direction of a veterinarian as part of a veterinarian-client-patient relationship, otherwise known as a VCPR. You really need to take the time to review all product labels before giving cattle any kind of injectable product. And be sure to read those enclosed client information sheets and keep a copy on hand for every product you're using. So now we've got our cattle properly restrained and we've read our labels. Let's talk about record keeping, because the next thing to do is to get the lot number or the animal ID numbers of the cattle you'll be processing. The Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA program, has some specific recommendations on good record keeping. In relation to, to BQA guidelines, it basically boils down to documenting the event. So we want to make sure that we document what products were administered, where they came from, the animal it was administered to, when and how and where it was administered. Uh, this is very critical as it relates to BQA because we want to lend confidence that our industry is doing things properly so that we can go back and report these events, especially when we're talking about food safety and withdrawal times. You'll want to have all that information captured on your shoot side computer, a notepad, tablet, or whatever you're using, and you have to have a plan ready too before the processing begins. Everybody should know exactly what their roles and responsibilities are going to be. It's important that a lead person be identified within the processing crew, that way nothing gets missed. Um, being responsible for making sure that those administering uh, different products are properly trained in administration of those products so we don't encounter any accidents. With new employees, you'll want to get them familiar with all the products you're using, including what they are and why they're used. Bring new employees up to speed with the information on the product labels, in addition to the safety aspects, how to handle those products safely and how to administer them correctly. Don't forget to also review your emergency response plan and show them where it's posted in case they need it in a hurry. It should have the phone number for the local medical clinic, hospital, emergency service, and poison control center. Let's talk a little more about the environment you're trying to create and the animal behavior you're looking for when processing. The environment in the processing barn should be clean and organized. Uh, if we have a barn that's in disarray, uh, we, we have more of a chance that we're going to counter an accident. So everything should be clean and in its place. Again, the environment should be relaxed, as noise-free as possible, so that it translates uh, to a relaxed attitude or as much as possible in the cattle. We want to make sure that only the personnel responsible for processing those cattle in the barn we don't want any extraneous uh, personnel in the barn, no bystanders, things of that nature, uh, because then we're only increasing the risk for an accident. Let's talk more about injections. Now this seems obvious, but I'll go ahead and say it. 
you've got to handle syringes with the utmost care. Don't put them in your pocket or hold them in your teeth. Treat them with respect. When you're giving injections, there are some BQA guidelines for best practices. And always be sure to follow the instructions on the product label. Be sure to give injections in front of the shoulders in what we call the injection triangle of the neck. If it's an intramuscular or IM injection, meaning it goes into muscle tissue, make sure it's not more than 10 cc's according to BQA guidelines. But the truth is, you want to avoid that kind of injection whenever you can. IM injections are the most likely to result in injection site lesions that damage the muscle and create more carcass losses at harvest due to trimming. Again, per BQA guidelines, it's much better to administer injections subcutaneously or just under the skin, but only if it's compatible with the product you're injecting, so you've got to check the labels. Now, I want to focus on Mycotil in particular. Mycotil, or Tilmycosin injection, is a cattle antibiotic used to treat and control bovine respiratory disease, called BRD, which is the most common disease in feedlot cattle. You should administer Mycotil as a subcutaneous injection in the neck at a dosage of 1.5 to 3 cc's per 100 pounds of body weight. And note that it has a withdrawal time of 42 days. As Mycotil is a prescription drug, you always consult your veterinarian and, and only use it under a valid veterinary client patient relationship. Also visit with your veterinarian and make sure everybody who is using it is trained in Mycotil safe handling and use. A couple words about safety. Don't administer Mycotil if you're working cattle alone, treating in a pen or alleyway, or any pasture setting where an animal is not properly restrained. As we talked about earlier, Mycotil should only be used in situations where proper animal restraint is possible. It is not recommended to use Mycotil when you are roping cattle and treating them on the spot. Also, don't ever put Mycotil in your saddlebags. It also matters what kind of needle you use to administer Mycotil. Mycotil should be administered using a 1 half or 5 eighths inch needle that's 16 or 18 gauge. Never use Mycotil in an automatic powered syringe. Speaking of syringes, we've got one that's specifically intended to make the administration of Mycotil safe and easy. It's called the Securus Syringe, manufactured by Simcro. It has a built-in self-tenting feature that makes the injection process easier and more accurate. It also has a special needle guard to help prevent accidental self-injections. The syringe features a two-step safety process, so the product actually doesn't come out until the trigger is pulled and the syringe is pushed against the calf. Once both of these steps are taken, the handle can be depressed and the injection given. To uh, administer Mycotilla with a secure syringe, the first step is to place the cone of the syringe on the animal's neck. When the cone is there, push down the syringe while simultaneously pulling back on the trigger. This will allow the needle to extend out the end of the syringe and penetrate the skin. Once there, rotate your hand towards the animal, which will pull the needle away from the muscle. When you're in the right spot, squeeze on the handle, and that will administer the Mycotil. It's a little bit different syringe than most people are used to. Just like anything else, I think it just takes a little time for them to feel more comfortable using that syringe. It was no different when we were introduced to different guns for implants. At first there's a little bit of resistance, but eventually as we get a better comfort level we become more effective or efficient at using that, that syringe. Now, whether you're using the Securus syringe or not, there are a few things you can do and not do to protect your cattle and your crew's health and safety. First off, only use one hand when administering injections. Always keep the other hand back and out of the way. Also, if a needle is broken, bent, or damaged in any way, don't use it. Needles should be changed frequently and it should be done very carefully. Don't rush it. And keep the protective cover on the needle until you're ready to use it. Along those same lines, if your syringe is damaged in any way, you should stop using it immediately and switch to a new one. I hope you've picked up some good, practical information about animal restraint, what to do and what not to do when handling a syringe and giving an injection. And if you would like to try the Secura syringe, contact your veterinarian, animal health products distributor, or a Lanco sales representative to get one. Next, we're going to talk just a little bit more about using Mycotil safely and effectively, particularly how to store it 
and what to do in case of human exposure to mica till.